This is the Solomon S-Lab Spectre. And Solomon tells us that it's the democratization of super shoes. An elite shoe for everyone running eight minute miles or slower for their marathon. And even though I find pace-based shoes to be really patronizing, I have to admit that Solomon has made a really good shoe. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzia and I'm a non-elite runner who views shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys about the Solomon S-Lab Spectre. But before I do, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Solomon sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for these shoes. However, no one's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video, and no one's got a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Solomon S-Lab Spectre and let's start with the specs. This is a 38 millimeter stack height shoe with an eight millimeter drop, giving us 30 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. And in this shoe, we've got three main components. The top layer of the shoe is PIBA based. That's a race grade material. In the middle, there is a carbon fiber plate that has wings on the side to help make it to be more of a stable experience. And on the bottom layer, we've got energy foam, which is Solomon's EVA based midsole foam that we see in their daily trainers. What you'll also notice by looking at this shoe is that there is a very early rocker. In other words, the geometry of the shoe changes. It curls towards the forefoot. That starts really far back and Solomon is calling that their R camber. And for traction, there is a thick layer of Solomon's contour grip in the forefoot and also rubber protecting the two heel flares that provide stability in the back of this shoe. Moving to the upper, we have a very daily trainer style upper. It's a little bit more comfortable and forgiving than a race upper might otherwise be. There is a light amount of padding in this tongue. It's not gusseted, so it does flop around a little bit. And there is a moderate amount of padding in through the heel cup and into this Achilles flare. And there is very little structure otherwise in what is a floppy heel cup, which is something I like to see for race product. Altogether, this shoe comes in at a weight of 8.3 ounces or 232 grams. All right, now that we're done reading through the syllabus, let's talk about what it was like to actually run in this shoe. And I have to say, bottom line, I have a lot of fun running in this shoe, and I think Solomon has made a fantastic shoe here. There is a good amount of cushion that you're getting from the Piba as your foot hits the ground, and there is a nice roll through and push off, even though the carbon fiber plate, I think, is doing more stability work than it is doing any propulsive kind of springy work. Overall, the shoe runs really well. It feels light on foot. It feels nimble. The upper fits well. I went true to size and that was a nice snug but comfortable fit for me. And I enjoyed having this shoe on for a two and a half hour long run that I did at the paces kind of dictated by the marketing department for this shoe. I ran a long run starting at 8.45 minutes per mile, finishing 18 miles later down at eight minutes per mile or at the upper speed limit for this shoe. And I feel like for that entire pace range. I just really enjoyed having the shoe on. Nothing felt too out of whack, so it was very balanced as far as shoes go. I was getting a good amount of cushion, a good amount of responsiveness, a good amount of stability, and overall a good amount of pep and excitement. So it was a very fun shoe for me to run in. I really enjoyed it. I also did take the shoe with me earlier in the day. I had a couple of guys, Floberg and Matt Inglis Fox, came up to do the same run, although at a much faster pace than I did. Uh, and I did a little bit of filming with them and Cyrus. Uh, mostly in that morning I was driving the car, but every once in a while we would hop out and I'd have to run to different locations or run alongside those other runners. So there were a couple of bursts of speed where I was going much faster than the max allowable speed limit that is set for the S Lab Spectre. And I found even there, moving quickly in the shoe, the shoe had a lot of pep and excitement to it. So I had a lot of fun moving even faster as well. 
And I'm also happy to say that the stability elements that are built in the shoe that gave me a lot of concern when I first heard about it last December at TRE in Austin didn't bother me at all. So these two flares that are in the heel, I thought they might feel a little bit clunky or get in the way of my foot strike. And then I felt like this winged carbon fiber plate might start to feel kind of like a Mizuno wave plate or like an old Asics Trustic system, but I just really didn't notice it at all. And it just was overall a shoe that moved well with my feet and just felt like an extension of my body in a very good way. So then, why am I so mad at Solomon for making this shoe? I think there's three main reasons for it. One, I disagree with the entire concept of paste-based shoes. I think that for pace-based shoes to make sense, you have to have a normal runner in mind. And so that way you set easy effort paces at what a normal runner's pace would be. And I'm not really sure what a normal runner is. And so as I've approached reviewing running shoes, I've always expressed things as easy effort rather than easy pace or race effort rather than race pace, because I believe that what I'm feeling in a daily trainer at easy effort is pretty analogous to what you will experience regardless of what your pace ranges are as an easy effort run or what I'm feeling in a race day shoe at race efforts is going to be similar to what you're feeling at race day efforts regardless of what race paces you have. And if that's not true, then there's no point in having professional athletes be sponsored by shoe brands. Because then if we can't extrapolate that hard effort for one person will be roughly equivalent to hard effort to a normal person, then why does the pro athletes preferences matter at all? They do matter and we do care. And that's because hard efforts translate to hard effort regardless of the pace. Easy efforts translate to easy efforts regardless of the pace. And so I just disagreed number one with the premise of paste-based shoes. That being said, let's move on to part two. The other reason why I don't like paste-based shoes is because it feels like gatekeeping. Let's say I want to go and buy Solomon's premier race product, the S-Lab Phantasm version two. Can you imagine the person working at that shoe store sizing you up and saying, this one, maybe not for you. How about you try this other one? It just feels very patronizing. And look, if I have researched a shoe before I even went into running retail, thought that this would be a good shoe for me and I wanted to go buy the shoe, I should just be able to buy the shoe without anyone in the store trying to pace check me for the shoe that I want to race in, for the shoe that I want to spend my money on and put my feet in. So I just feel like the whole concept of like, you're not allowed to run in one set of shoes to be really frustrating. And number three, I think because of the way they're positioning this shoe, especially with the price as the premier race shoe for non-elite runners, and they're defining non-elite as eight minute miles for marathon or slower. I feel like that is going to eliminate a large segment of the market, which is between the 650 per mile or faster that Solomon prescribes for the Phantasm 2 and the eight minutes and slower for the S-Lab Spectre. There's a lot of runners in between these two spaces and you're really going to be alienating them, pushing them maybe towards one or the other. When in real life, a runner could easily have both of these shoes in their lineup because what Solomon has made here is a fantastic tempo day shoe, a training companion to go along with Pinnacle Race product. This isn't an either or, like if you're slow, go this way. If you're fast, go that way. This is a different type of shoe built for a different type of purpose that yes, a lot of people will choose to race in, but let people figure that out. They already are with other tempo day shoes that exist on the market. It's completely fine. But instead they're kind of like making people make a decision, making other people making a decision for you. And I just find that not only to be gatekeeping, patronizing, but I also feel like it's just counterproductive. So many people aren't going to get a chance to run in this shoe because of its positioning, because of its pricing. I think Solomon really messed up what is otherwise a fantastic shoe. Could be one of my favorite shoes of 2024. So with that all being said, 
let's talk about some of the pairing options and the buying guide and alternative recommendations that I think you should definitely take a look at. So for the pairing options, I think we could stay in the Solomon family if you like Solomon, but let's say you are using this as your tempo trainer. I think you're gonna need an easy day shoe and a race day shoe. So for easy, let's go with the Solomon Aero Glide 2. I haven't started testing this one yet, but I did really enjoy last year's version. It's a great just everyday daily trainer, tall stack height, gets better with time because that energy foam starts to break down and break in. So that's one where you can log in a lot of your very easy miles. And then for your race day, Solomon has another great option. This is one of my top five carbon plated racers of 2023. This is a S-Lab Phantasm 2. I feel like it has a really nice retro feel. So if you've been racing in carbon for a long time, this will feel very familiar to you. So these three can make a really nice set of shoes to train in together. Now let's talk about the buying guide and some alternatives. The S-Lab Spectre comes in at $250 retail, which is normally a price reserved for Pinnacle Race product. And I think that that price is absolutely wrong for what they've built in the S-Lab Spectre. Let's talk about what the alternatives are and what those shoes come in price-wise. The first shoe that I think is the most comparable is going to be my 2023 shoe of the year, a fantastic tempo, option and that's from Puma the DV8 Nitro 2. It's got a racing foam up top with a little bit of a daily trainer foam in the heel and it's got a carbon fiber plate and a daily trainer style upper. Pretty much sounds to me on paper lines up exactly the same as the S Lab Spectre. The DV8 Nitro comes in right now at 160 that's full retail and it seems like maybe there aren't that many units of this shoe left because it's been out for quite a while now. It used to be on sale, but now I'm only seeing it at the full price. But even then, at 160, the DV8 Nitro 2 is a really great choice that people can use for tempo training or for your marathon race. The other shoe that I'm gonna have you guys look at is from Saucony. It's the Endorphin Speed 3. I know the Endorphin Speed 4 is right around the corner. I don't have that one in for testing yet. Hopefully that'll be coming in soon. But for now, let's talk about the Endorphin Speed 3. Now, this is a shoe that didn't actually work all that well for me, but I know from talking to you guys that you guys have absolutely loving it because it has a race caliber foam and a nylon plate inside with wings underneath the arch, indicating that the plate element is more for stability than it is for or springiness and it's got a little bit more durable and comfortable upper again talking about a lot of the same things as the S Lab Spectre. The Endorphin Speed 3 came in full retail at 170, but right now you can find it on sale for 135. So those are two fantastic options that are competing in the same space for what the S Lab Spectre is providing and they're priced much better. So it's going to be very hard, even though Solomon made a fantastic shoe for me to recommend it at the full $250 price. So those are my thoughts on the Solomon S Lab Spectre. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?